what is the gospel other than people seeing my actions, my lifestyle, portraying Christ. Just the profound idea that Jesus, the King of Glory, came to give his life and in order to draw me to himself, mm. that now my sin is exchanged and he took my sin and gave me his righteousness and I, now I stand as an heir in Christ, a son of God. Jesus has this amazing thing where he qualifies the called, he does not call the qualified. We believe he's the Alpha, he's the Omega, we believe Jesus Christ is the same thing. We also believe that the Lord Jesus Christ is the only one who can change a human heart and he's also the only one who can change the circumstances of a human being. So he is the center, we believe he's the door to heaven and we also believe eternal life is in Him. We believe healing and everything is in Jesus Christ. Jesus is the guy that made me be the guy that I wanted to be. Here we are at the Reading Airport. We got the bus full. It's 6.40 in the morning and we're about to head to San Francisco Airport. We're super excited. It's gonna be a great day. We got 50 plus people headed to South Africa. Here we go. I have a discipleship ministry called Grace Place and one uh, one year, it was probably I think seven years ago, I had a student apply for Grace Place and his parents were pastors in Bethlehem. I speak to Daniel uh, and I say, we need someone from Bethel. I feel this really small church in, in South Africa and um, we, we can't get like people from Bethel to come out. And so um, Daniel said, well, he's prepared to come. And that was the first time in 2013. Mm -hmm. That was the first time we had someone from Bethel actually coming to Bethlehem Christian Center. I came at the right time at that church when they were actually going through a hard time and the Lord gave me a word that actually really brought that church together. Three of their sons now have been through Grace Place and just the, the connection that I've had with Pastor Johan and Stinny and, and just their boys and just seeing how God is using now them to actually influence uh, their, their city of Bethlehem. doing a, a Paul Johnson hosting the President's Curriculum as a small group, um, all the small groups in the church. And then I got this email saying, hey, there's a team coming, visiting from Bethel in George. And I phoned the lady and she said, hey, just get in contact with this guy. And it happened that the team actually arrived on the weekend. So we finished on the Wednesday with the small group curriculum. And on that weekend, the team arrived. But I just knew, I knew that we needed something. We needed something that I was hearing what was, that was happening in Bethel, what we experienced in the hosting of Presence um, curriculum. So yeah, we got them involved straight away.
I open up, see how you were designed to see. So we were just in this house praying for the people that lived there, and I just felt an impression that this lady struggled with seeing in her in her eye that there was maybe some blindness or or just some problems in her eye. And so we just laid hands on her and prayed for her. And she said that her her sight was restored and there was no pain. The pain was actually so bad that it was affecting the other eye that, that was perfectly fine. And it was kind of like draining that eye too. And, and so all of the pain went away and she was completely healed. Completely better. <laughs> <laughs> yes. 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 I was given a book by one of the other elders um, called Heavy Rain by Chris Vallotton. And there was just one specific paragraph in that book that was so prophetic. And it was something to the effect that he was speaking about what would it look like mm. in a city if that city mirrored the kingdom of God and reflected what the kingdom of God looks like. And that he felt that Reading was called to be a city like that, that reflected what the kingdom of God looked like. and. That just clicked in my spirit because that's what we felt for George, and it was almost like this is what we feel we want that that the, the vision that God has given us for George exactly mm. the same thing. And I actually said to the elders, I said, we need to get these people here. We need to connect somehow with Reading. There has to be a connection between Reading and George because it's exactly the same vision that when people come to the city, they mm. see what does the kingdom of God look like. I think for the the last number of years it's just been bringing in the love in a variety of different forms I think that for me is what excites me um, you know because I think that's that's uh, what scripture teaches us is you know it's it's the love it's it's Christ because that's where it starts that's what brings people together If you're hearing me speak these words that God loves you, it's because He does. He wants you. He's in pursuit of you, just like Ella said. He's pursuing you right now. That's why we're here. It's because He's after you. Specifically you. He's after. We're praying for the sick right now. We're sharing the gospel. We're sharing the love, the joy, the peace of God with people and uh, seeing lives transformed. The last lady we prayed for, actually, she said, as soon as we prayed, she goes, I said, what are you experiencing? She's like, something's changing in my body. I just feel like something's changing. So the change is happening when the gospel shows up. Well, in the house, we also met another woman named Mary, and she had been in a really bad car accident that had injured her spinal cord, and um, she wasn't able to really walk very well or use the bathroom properly. Um, one of her legs, the muscles were not where they needed to be, um, and she just didn't have a lot of strength. And when we prayed for her, she said she started feeling like a heat and something moving around in her, her lower spine. Um, and then she felt strength in her leg. And we, we prayed a few times for her. And uh, she was able to stand and walk without bracing herself on the wall. And I, I held her hands. And she said that she was feeling something different happening inside. I believe God is going to continue healing her. He's already been doing so much in her body already. Can you, can you do this? How's it, how's it feel? Is it better? Better? That baby is cool. You completely overtake every every bit of pain. Is Hallelujah. Command all pain to leave right now in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, all pain to leave. How does it feel? Is it, is it, is it gone or is it still there? Gone. 
Is it gone? <laughs> it's gone. Thank you, Jesus. Praise God. Hallelujah. For the team that's coming, it's really their hearts are open to hear and to be impacted by the gospel, even though they're, they're, even though they're bringing the gospel. The gospel impacts them. Because you're the ones with a funny accent. People listen to you. I can go into the township or I can go into the street or whatever, but because I'm a South African, people don't really take notice. But the moment you bring a foreigner in, they're able to share within a very short space of time what would take us literally sometimes weeks or months. The first mission team that I led was to Mozambique. I'm wrestling with the same kind of questions. You know, you're going for two weeks. Are we not just doing spiritual tourism? And at one point, the pastor get, gets up to deliver his sermon. And he says, um, we've been praying that God would establish our authority here in the village. And today God has answered that prayer. So afterwards I asked the interpreter, what did he mean by that? And he said, you've got to understand in their culture, the most important people receive the most important guests. So we were these people that had driven 2,000 kilometers um, to come and visit them. And we had, um, we had established them as being the most important people in their village. It's actually not about me that goes on the mission trip. It's about the people that you are going to. And you don't understand. We were the answer to years of prayer for that pastor. You know, that's, that's incredibly humbling. I was 14 years old. This was in the year 1994. And I typed out over 300 letters I sent them all over and honestly I only ended up getting a few hundred dollars and I was really upset. I was like, man, I did all this work. I had another son that was going on a mission trip and then Daniel wanted to go on a mission trip. So we had two sons and there was no way that we could send two sons. But I knew in my heart and my husband knew that Daniel had to go on this trip. My parents uh, prayed about it and they were like, uh, we really believe this trip is going to change your life. So because of that. We don't have the money, but we're going to take out a loan to actually get you to go on this trip. And it's a miracle in itself because the manager gave me a loan and I stated the real reason because I wanted to send my sons on a mission trip. So she gave me the loan and they both got to go that year. We in America have everything and unless you really go and your eyes are open to see how other people live and how they're so in tune to God because that's all they have is Jesus Christ. Because we as Americans are even people that have more than enough get more about maintaining this, maintaining that, and they forget the importance of Jesus in our life. There's a, a, an openness for the people that are living when they have a, a stranger from a foreign country actually coming. So I think it's such an incredible tool that unfortunately I don't think it's been utilize to really further the kingdom the way that it should be. We used to go to Mozambique for outreaches. It's it's just this thing. You go and you you have <laughs> you you don't live in the environment but you know what you what you can bring kind of thing. And and I think that's that's why it matters. It's you need to to bring that fresh air, the, the fresh breath we're not just going on these trips to just invest in South Africa. We're actually investing in these teams because the more they actually go and they get transformed, the more they're gonna have a heart for missions. And in the same way that I was 14 and I went on my first missions trip and now I'm 38 and I've been on countless missions trips. I've been on countless ministry trips. You know, I, I really feel like missions and short-term missions in itself is a way for not only to change a nation, but it's a way for personal lives and individual transformation to take place. So we're going to pray for that and God is going to heal you. Yes. 
Like it, it felt like something was pulled out. Wow. Oh my gosh. Wow. wow. Come on. Come on. We devalue short-term missions because we put a lot of uh, emphasis on our contribution and we don't understand that God's got a plan and we're just one small cog in that plan. So short-term missions is a good way of saying, here I am God, use me. Yeah. No pain? No pain. No more arthritis. <laughs> 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 My friend is gonna do it. She'll be able to hold up your fingers. Yeah. Mm. She sees two fingers over there. Could, could she see that far before? Three. She said three. Yes. Yeah, that's three. So could she, could she see. Is it, could, she, could you do that before? Before we pray? The, the term or the phrase, the gospel, for me, it's, it's the, the thought of what is my lifestyle? Can people see within me uh, the hope of glory? Can people see within me, you know, that Christ is risen? Can people see within me um, faith? You know, can people see within my life miracles? Your old life dies and you receive new life in him. 
So all of the sin dies in Jesus comes with his love and fills you. And you are new creation in Christ. So all of the the sickness all of the pain goes away and Jesus fills you with his love. See, the Christian life is understanding this, this very thing. That we're dead because of the cross, now we're alive. See, the death of Jesus is the death of us. The resurrection of Jesus is the resurrection of us. See, we're just as new as Jesus Christ because he is our identity. He who knew no sin became sin, so we may become the righteousness of God. Jesus, how do you feel? Clean? Yeah. Clean? Jesus lives inside of you now. And he loves you. Yeah. I'd say the whole gospel is is that perfect combination of word and spirit, you know. So it mustn't just sound like good news, it must it must be good news, you know. I give Jesus my life. I cut, I cut the beast. I turn to the, the to Jesus. Because I take time, I take long time because I didn't connect with God. I don't know what happened. No, I decide to to turn back to my God. I give my Lord my heart and, and my life. I give Lord my life. Lord, I give you my heart. Jesus, praise God. Okay, Cornelius said that he gave his heart to Christ tonight. He, he prayed to God, and as the guys prayed for him, he's also saying, and therefore, that he has committed himself to Christ. The Cornelius says tonight his heart was just totally taken apart, and he opened his heart to Christ, and the sin that was in his heart, God just removed the sin. Just like Adam's sin caused me to inherit the nature of sin within me. What Jesus did on the cross caused me to inherit a whole new DNA. 2 Corinthians 5 verse 17 For if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. God's gift is Christ's righteousness, to be in right standing with God through Christ. So, and all the other blessings and benefits, prosperity, peace, power, provision, protection, all the aspects just comes automatically. It's, it's your portion automatically when you're born into, into God's family. And, and, and to walk in that, it's, it's, a, it's a privilege, but it's also a right and it's a gift of God. Everything that I'm doing, the sin I'm living in, and he still looks at me and says, and this is my son. Wow. How, like, if you, can, if you can know that God's looking at you and calling you a son or a daughter today, that will change your life. Come on. Right. If you can know that he looks at you and he says, and this is my daughter, right. and this is my son, despite anything you've done, your, your life will change. Yeah. You will live in the abundance. You'll live in the joy of heaven when you realize it's really not about what you do, but it's about what God thinks of you. Because that will change what you do. If you know God has a very, very high perspective of you, if you know that when, when God thinks about you, he gets all giddy on the inside, like he, he flips out when he thinks about you. He gets so excited when he thinks about you. When you know that in your heart, your life will be different. Good. Uh, Grace Place team has been coming out to South Africa, and specifically George, uh, from, what is that year, nine years ago, mm. 2011, 12 yeah. So Mashant uh, Mars attended one of the services here 
And yeah, ever since every year when Grace plays and, and the team came out and Bethel teams, uh, he was always invited to join and there was difference and there was power. And, and ultimately, if you look at the outreaches and streets and whatever they went to, uh, you could see there were miracles, there was miracles performed, people's fruit. life changed, the fruit was there. Um, mm. And not just traditional uh, Christianity, as we can call it, uh, but there was a difference. They showed us that it's, it's, not only, it's not only people from America that's bringing something. It's, it's us. We can do this. It is, it is simple. Prophecy is hearing from God and giving the word to somebody. Um, laying of hands or healing people is literally just reading scripture, seeing that this is what God wanted. This is what Jesus did. And all of us, we have the Spirit of God. We are the righteousness of God. And we can do this. She can see clearly. She couldn't see clearly before. You can see completely clear. Praise God. To me, that's what this is all about. It's about us coming, but it's not about us being the main people. It's about us actually imparting and empowering the local South Africans to do the work. Because we're, we're only here for two weeks. So in my mind, I'm like, we, we can't be the main people. The, the point of these trips is to encourage the local South African people to go do what we're doing. When we come on a two week trip, the point of this is for them to actually be imparted to, to be empowered so that when we leave, they're picking it up and running with what we actually just did. So I think specifically focused on the team that's been coming out over the years. You know, God is a God of miracles. Um, not just a God that we go to worship on a Sunday, but He wants to be involved. As the teams come out, praying for people, seeing miracles, physical healings, um, hearts mended, you know, relationships restored. I think that's what it's all about. The local church says, wow, we saw these signs and wonders. We saw these miracles. It happened in this building and therefore it can happen next Sunday when the missions team isn't here anymore. I mean that one testimony of the, the, the lady that has been bedridden for 26 years, they cast out a demon and she can walk. I mean that's a testimony that's going to live in our congregation for the rest of, of this year and even longer. When, when we need powerful testimonies, this is the stuff that we can go and grab onto and say, this is what happened in our town and therefore it can happen in, in this meeting today. People get a lot more self-confident. You know, they, they realize, um, I, can, I can do that. And not only can I experience God here, but I can do what they're doing. That's what I've always really appreciated about the Bethel teams, is that it's not, we're these amazing people with these amazing spiritual gifts. It's, we're here to tell you that you can do it as well. So I went out last year with one of the people in our church and I, I knew she was on fire so I was like this is awesome that she's coming with and I thought she's like one of us basically um, and we went and I asked her to pray for someone and, and she was almost hesitant to do it and she, eventually she was like okay I'll pray and she prayed and as soon as she prayed the person got healed and uh, I can't recall but it was, it was something like pain in the chest. And as soon as she prayed, the pain left and she was just wrecked. She couldn't believe that, that God would use her. And, and I think that's, that's the biggest impact I've seen from Bethel coming is people no longer settling for just Sunday mornings. You 
who you are right now is perfect for what God wants to do today. So if you feel afraid, that's okay. God can move through your fear. If that, if you feel like you're uh, you're extremely bold, that's awesome. God will move through your boldness. But I just encourage you guys to just step out into something maybe you haven't done before. But at the same time, realize like there's no pressure today to produce a result. This is Manita. important thing is to understand that everything that we do has to be based on the word uh, because if it's not based on word it's just another good idea or it's just another great fad that's happening um, but one of the things that has been a blessing to me has been um, just that realization that it's burst out of what does the Bible say so that's what we keep on going back to You very often get charismatic movements and outreaches and so forth and and um, they flow with the spirit and, and it, it's miraculous and so forth but what is an amazing balance about these teams is um, just the incredible integrity mm. and the characters of these young people is just awesome it's just wonderful to see these mm. Christ-like people it's almost like a literally uh, a modern day version of what the New Testament must have looked like in the days of Paul and how they were traveling around. Mm. The students are doing exactly what the disciples did. It's just literal reality in present day and it's not uh, the strange mystical historical stuff that happened in the Bible. It's happening now and we get to be part of it and, and to welcome it and to honor it. George is the area where there's plenty of churches, too many I think if you look at the amount of people here and everybody's sort of doing their own thing and I think it's probably a sort of a uh, uh, South African problem I would say. Nice. Whenever someone uh, disagrees with something in the church they start a new church uh, which obviously breaks up the unity which I think is a major problem in the country in general but also in the Southern Cape area and specifically George. I think the last couple of years, a lot of churches have been saying we need to get unity in the area and especially in the, in the kingdom. Because obviously if you stand together and unite, you can do so much more. I think the, the Lord's vision for unity is for the city to be transformed. That there would be a testimony going out that churches would take hands with each other and to bring the solutions of, of, of the problems that we are facing in South Africa. When, when the church starts taking hands and we can start creating jobs where we can uplift the poor, where we can bring better health into our towns and in, in the whole region, I, I think that's what the church should look like. Education and hospitals started with the church and it's become state institutions and it's, 
it's time for the church to take its rightful place again and head up the solutions that are needed and that that's going to come in unity. So last year a very significant moment for me was where we just we were sitting around the table, we were planning the team's visit and we were saying, hey, but why don't we do something together? And I remember we were proposing it two years before that and everybody's like, yeah, maybe we should, maybe. but it never, it never, it was, it wasn't God's timing. And then last year we said, hey, let's do it. And a couple of other leaders said, yes, let's do it. And then we had a few meetings and we ended off with a meeting in the, in the Civic. And we were expecting 120 people and there were around 800 between, between 600 and 800 people just flooding, flooding Civic. And I, I realized, okay, but it's, it's something that's in the hearts of people. People are hungry. Um, for, for, for God, hungry for revival. And we've been stirred, we've been led so well by just the team coming and facilitating um, that hunger. found in the word was the word preached is there power in the word check out your body move your body so, around I've been having pain for the last eight years and where at everywhere everywhere wow and it's it's such so much better thank you Jesus thank you thank you thank you thank you thank you Come on, come on, come on, come on. Thank you, Father. If it was a 10 before, what is it at now? About a 2. A 2. Thank you, Jesus. Is there anything that you couldn't do before that you can do now without excruciating pain? Just being forward. Just moving forward? Like that? Can you just do that three times? it now? No pain. No pain. Come on. What happened with you, ma'am? I had the stupid pain since we moved to Georgia. I like that. Stupid pain. Like a year and three months, then I could never do this. I always go like this. Wow. And then we You could never do that before. No, no. I and now you can. Yes. How long? Now we can say hallelujah. How, how long have you not been year able to do that? Year and three months. To George. A year and three months, you I could not do could this. Never do this. Um, I lost my patella, which is the kneecap, on my left leg years ago, and I, I've never had problems with it. So I sat there and I said, Lord, create me a new kneecap. <laughs> you know what that's happened. called? That's called it's faith. Happened. It's happened. Yeah. I've got a kneecap. <laughs> Wait, what? I never had a kneecap. You've never had a kneecap? No. And now you have a kneecap. Knee Come on! That's amazing! If you have pain in your body, I want you to step out into the aisles. If you have shoulder pain, if you have back pain, I want you to step into the aisles right now. I work at the George Market on a Saturday. I know you guys are really used to and I'm on my feet the whole day, so I am so sore. My body takes four days to recover. I just know that the Lord has lifted me up and strengthened my back. There's no pain, it's like my whole body was full. 
I love coming back every year because every single year I come back, I see the growth and I see the momentum. And I just know that the Lord is doing a massive, massive work in South Africa. Just the fact that I've been coming year in and year out shows commitment and consistency. And I think there's safety in that. We, we see every year there's a build-up of not just relationships, but um, depth. You know, people, people are opening up their hearts, they're opening up their facilities in, in, a, in a shack or in a, in a rural area, that the teams actually build those relationships. And, and what's amazing is that there's such a positive um, outturn um, people here of, of the teams coming again, they actually say, you know what, we're desperate to actually have people that are want to serve, but not with a specific agenda. If you want us to dig a trench, to fix something, to pray, you know, we will get our hands dirty. The greatest thing that, that I could see, um, even as, after the first year, was the, the unity that there came between the churches because the team's so big, like 53 students coming out, and we have a small church, 160 people, so we need to resource all the other churches in the region, even um, outlying towns that are 100 kilometers from here. We sent teams out to them, and there, there came such a unity after that. Um, and this year it was so easy organizing the outreaches because the guys have started actually asking when is the Bethel missions team coming out. We've heard of many institutions or churches or groups that come in and evangelize a place and just leave and then the people fall away again because as Jack said there's it needs to be what from the local church side there needs to be the discipleship and the growing and all that because now people got saved and then the Bethel team leaves so what now so it's very important that that is there but the fact that uh, Bethel comes every single year shows commitment um, and that you guys are going somewhere with this it's not just a hit and run let's see what we can do for the numbers or you know getting more people saved it's important what we do after that so I just appreciate the fact that they are accountable for what they bring. Nine years ago I would never have dreamed that we could have had this amazing privilege and connection that we've had with um, the uh, team and how we've just built this lovely relationship up together. There's really just been kind of an awakening of just churches coming together um, has been has been a big thing. And then I, I just firmly believe as well that when the church is mobilised, uh, it just straight away impacts the community. It cannot but impact the community.
that's what I think about short-term missions. Like, it's totally worth it. It's totally, totally worth it because you're building on top of something that was there and then someone else gets to come and do more because God's not, you know, He's not just working through me or through, you know, just the team. He's working through everybody and everyone that says yes to Him. When people ask me, what has kept your fire going? What has kept your passion for the Lord going? I would hands down say missions. Because every time I go on a missions trip, I'm like, I'm blown away. You know, whether I'm with the richest of the rich or whether I'm with the poorest of the poor, the Lord shows up and, and just miracles, the supernatural power of God is just made present in every situation. <laughs> The other thing that I really value, looking, looking um, at the last five years that the team came, um, is just the fact that they, they came every year. And they, there's, every year there's a, there's a build up, because it's always in relationship. At the beginning I'm like, who are these guys? They're well, they, they're awesome, but I don't know them. And now suddenly it's not only I that have built relationship with them, but the congregation have built relationship with them. So, and, and constantly you can just see they, they're open to be equipped, they're open to be empowered. So I think for me that the biggest thing that happened is just the empowerment of our people, people of George, to, to move and move in the Holy Spirit. The, the team is starting to look less like a team and more like individuals that, you know, I would be so bold as to say are friends, you know. And um, yeah, you know, it's an amazing thing when you're on opposite ends of the world, but you're striving for the same thing. You know, that's about having the glory of God, you know, manifest throughout the whole earth. You know, and I've I've really gotten the sense that uh, we're working together for that cause, and that's it's meant a lot to me personally. I think our oldest one was about 13 when uh, when the teams first started arriving and so they've basically grown up with the teams coming every year and what has been so wonderful is that my kids can now also experience what real revival feels yeah. like and the presence of God and for me personally I think what has been such an amazing honor is my passion is the presence literally my absolute passion is to to pursue the presence of God and the face of God and uh, just to be placed in a position where I can just play a small role in assisting the teams or facilitating um, to bring the presence of God to the city and you all carry the presence of the Lord, the teams carry God's presence on them and that anointing is so amazing and glorious. Um, it's honoring Jesus. When we welcome you, we literally are welcoming Jesus. Mm. And uh, it's such an honor, you know, just to, 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 to welcome the presence of the Lord into the city. And I'm not too sure. Um, there are so many thousands of lives that get touched um, mm. during these trips and over the years uh, that will have a ripple effect that will last forever. And um, I know that it's had an impact on my children's lives that they'll never forget. And um, I'm just so grateful that, that we could also play a small part in just being in relationship with the team. Mm. I believe that there is a mighty revival coming to this nation and I believe that this revival is going to unleash people into their destiny, into their calling, into the, the things that God has, has desired for them. That is going to come as fear is, is broken off. I believe that a lot of people in the nation have struggled with fear, fear of 
of just stepping into boldness and stepping into courage. And I think one of the things that the Lord has called me to do to go there is to impart, to release, and to awaken a boldness and just an authority and a confidence to know who people are in Christ, to actually speak out in confidence. And I feel like the, the revival, I feel like the wave, I feel like the wind of God that's coming on that nation is gonna, is gonna be just awakened when people start walking out. It's a, it Romans, you know, the earth is groaning and longing for the manifest sons and daughters of God to be revealed. I feel like South Africa, that nation is groaning and longing for the manifest sons and daughters of God. And that is the church. The church are the manifest sons and daughters of God. But the church needs to be awakened to the reality of who we are in Christ so that we can step into our calling and step into our destiny.